Vitor. Uh, it's a question for Lucrezia. Uh, you did uh, document that the euro area, after the crisis, performed poorly relative to the US. And inside the euro area, uh, there is a surprisingly strong performance on the part of Gen uh, Germany, and uh, Greece and Italy underperformed. Uh, you said that we all knew why that was so. Since I'm the exception, could you please clarify it for me? <laughs> okay, okay, let me turn to the other Vitor. Yes. No, it's, it's, a, it's a question for both, uh, in fact, uh, because the conclusions of the uh, Barry uh, paper, um, as Lucrezia pointed out, uh, seem also to be uh, grim because, indeed, uh, it shows that in spite of the change in uh, uh, core and periphery between the two periods, the asymmetries uh, are still there. Uh, but I have the doubt that when we look to the adjustment that has happened uh, in the euro area, what we see is that uh, um, there has been a huge adjustment, not only in terms of fiscal, but also external current account. And both our analysis and the IMF analysis show that the bulk of the correction in the current account was structural. It was not because of conjunctural factors or uh, import compressions or, uh, no, it's not, it's not that. Um, and in spite of that, uh, uh, the, that huge adjustment, now countries, all countries are growing in the periphery um, and have done a real adjustment not just uh, some uh, short-term adjustment. That is uh, what we sort of see. Could this mean that this uh, real adjustment now uh, uh, can be considered as something that uh, um, uh, means that the sort of asymmetries or resilience to shocks has indeed changed in a significant way looking into the future, so that your grim conclusion would not be valid. Thank you, Vitor. Uh, next is Dirk. Um. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Barry was really an interesting overview um, and, and the cross-border flows, but they have not everywhere been the same. And I'm wondering whether you have looked at it and in some countries, and we did together Ireland, for example, there the, the cross-border flows were very strong. In some other countries, it was far less. And do you have a feeling what is really the distinguishing factor, uh, the differences between the countries? Um, okay, th thank you. Uh, Janis? Thank you. Um, one question to Barry and, uh, and to Lucretia. Um, my experience in Greece is that um, um, taking into account uh, the conclusions of the optimum currency areas is that uh, it, this theory does not take into account um, the willingness of policymakers to follow the rules of um, a fixed exchange rate or, or the optimum currency area. I mean, as we know from, from, from history, uh, the gold standard or the Bretton Woods collapsed because countries did not follow, did not have the discipline uh, to follow the rules. I think the same applies today in the euro. And I don't mean only um, irresponsible policy making in the European South, but also misunderstandings in the European North. Um, so how, how important is this element, Barry? Um, I mean, in Greece, as we know, um, uh, okay, financial flows were to, to non-trade the good sectors, but that was not the cause of the crisis. It was mostly the irresponsible fiscal policy which created bubbles in the public sector that led also to, to a huge current account deficit. So it was the irresponsible fiscal policy rather than the, um, fl the financial flows. Thank you. Okay, uh, Patrick Honahan. Thank you. My, my question for Barry also. 
So you took us through this idea that there's a supply shock triggering a demand shock, and that this was something unanticipated in the previous literature. What I'd like to understand is, do you think this is a, a new intrinsic dynamics of the monetary union, or is it just that there was this exogenous surge in financial globalization at the same time, and we don't expect to, have, to, to see it again? Okay, thank you. Uh, John Muehlbauer. Uh, In uh, 98, um, I wrote a piece on asymmetries in the in the eurozone, um, pointing to the um, problems of housing market asymmetries, housing and credit market asymmetries, um, and you know, Spain, Ireland, certainly, and the UK. If the UK had joined, we would have had uh, similar problems to Spain and Ireland. Um, that was part of the issue, but it seems to me the the Greek and the Italian problem are much more a problem of of failed governance. Um, it's the political process which is so dysfunctional in those economies. Thank, thank you. Uh, Bernard? So, so John reminded us yesterday of the um, important to distinguish the structural break from cyclical factors. Lucrezia said the um, first shock of the euro existence was Lehman. Uh, the first shock was actually the introduction of the euro itself. And my question is about the role of uh, stop flow adjustment and the balance of payments. If you go back to Javazzi Blanchard, that paper, when uh, Spain, and it, uh, Spain and Portugal had current account balances in excess of, of 10%, um, is that to be seen as a one-off adjustment also in asset, asset prices to the introduction of the euro, which was then reversed in 2008? Or was it a, a, a sort of a, a change in the correlations within the euro area? Okay, thank you. So that's a, a great set of uh, comments and questions. So um, maybe first to Lucrezia, just because you had a specific uh, question, uh, and then to Barry. Uh, okay. okay. Yes. Okay, Vitor. Uh, Vitor. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I mean, I have some conjecture. So I, I think in Italy, uh, the question I would agree uh, it's uh, uh, is not. A, uh, I mean, Italy didn't have the, the boom and bust <laughs> narrative. Okay, so this is why I wanted to, you know, to to flag it. Uh, is more about uh, structural, uh, and it actually is a story that uh, precedes the euro. I mean, if you study the, you know, Italy moved together with Germany with the core of uh, uh, European countries uh, until the mid-90s, and then since the mid-90s uh, started diverging. So um, a lot of, I mean, I, I can tell you a long stories about that. It is about, uh, you know, our corporate sectors, the difficulties on joining the, you know, information communication technology and so on. But a lot is also fiscal. Italy, uh, you know, had uh, primary surpluses between 2 and 5% for about, uh, I don't know, 25 years, 30 years, I mean, it's crazy. So uh, it's this combination, okay? And, um, and of course, governance, et cetera. Now, for Greece, uh, you can probably say similar stories, although Greece had a boom, okay, so that, uh, um, and Greece, okay, so Greece is Greece, okay, let, let me, uh, allow me to say Greece is Greece. Now, Germany, I think, is much more controversial, okay, so why uh, Germany was such a big winner. Now, I know that the IMF has done uh, studies by looking at, uh, you know, the initial exchange rate and competitiveness shock, uh, and I think that if you look also at market shares in the Italy and Germany, which share a lot of similarities in the structure of the manufacturing sector, you know, export driven economies, Italy was a big loser with respect to Germany. And I think this has been fully documented by, you know, IMF papers and so on. So that was, that's one thing. And uh, on Victor, the other Victor, uh, all countries, uh, uh, I agree with you. I mean, I think there has been this incredible adjustment. Uh, and in fact, you can see it in my chart, they're all back, okay? so. And uh, uh, now, is this going to happen? Uh, you know, are they going to be vulnerable in the future? It's not obvious, but uh, I think that uh, levels of in initial levels of income per capita matters because you know, some of these countries, they still have to converge. 
-hmm. And uh, convergence uh, is a tricky thing, okay? Because a lot of, you know, if you look at this Spain and so on, you know, convergence has been done through, uh, you know, has been coupled with financial fragility. So we have to watch, okay? So we have to have the good convergence and not the bad convergence. So that's, that's a policy thing. Okay, Th thank you, Lucrezia. Barry? Um, thank you to uh, Lucretia for her um, comments and, and observations. Uh, she emphasized uh, the importance of um, distinguishing the post-global financial crisis period from the years that came before. I'm sympathetic in principle. It turns out not to be so important in practice for the exercise that we undertake uh, in this paper. We find basically the same thing when we cut the data set in, in 2008, as we do when we roll, roll it forward by uh, the better part of a decade. An important uh, caveat here is that when we do the estimates, we look at the whole period. When we look at the correlations across countries, we leave out 2009, because everybody is hit by a very large shock. 2009 is a big, big outlier for all the countries, and you'd get very high positive correlations across the board if you include that data point. It shows up as a big negative aggregate demand shock and a smaller negative aggregate supply shock in the time series. We leave it out when we do the correlations. Um, Lucretia's interesting exercise uh, was a, a different perspective from ours on uh, um, uh, the evolution of, of, of the constituent member states of the monetary union, um, because her, her question is from a trend rate of growth point of view, who did better and who did worse? It's logical that she, she should break the set of countries down in, in, into different subgroups, but I think there is an interesting substantive question, which is, do we think that the members of a, mo a monetary union need to grow at similar rates? on trend, is that that important for the smooth, smooth functioning of a monetary union? Do we uh, need to see real convergence in, 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 in terms of faster growth rates in uh, uh, countries that start out behind or, uh, or not? So we, we, we have historically seen uh, catch up growth in the poorer regions within the United States and we don't see that now anymore. We have a variety of strains in, in the US. I'm not sure whether or not this is the source of um, some of them. Uh, Vitor uh, Constancio asked about uh, uh, how grim my conclusions are. Uh, on, on the one hand, they are grim. On the other hand, they are not uh, the two-handed economist's uh, argument. On, on, on the one hand, we do not find evidence of faster speed of adjustment. Uh, in Europe. So you can estimate uh, a vector auto regression, you can shock it, you can look at the impulse response and say how many periods, how many years does it take to complete 90% of the uh, eventual ad uh, adjustment and we're, we're not seeing faster uh, adjustment in that sense in our data than we did earlier on. There are hints of slower adjustment within the United States which would be consistent with the idea that labor mobility has declined in the U.S. because of housing market related factors and, and potentially uh, others. The positive, the less grim uh, interpretation of the results is that everything we found is, is consistent with the uh, uh, high importance of banking union to a company monetary union and, 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 and Europe, as we heard yesterday, has made significant progress in the direction of banking union. If bank supervisors take these cross-border financial repercussions into account when uh, um, setting regulations. Uh, one, one can hope that, that their impact would be less. And, and to Dirk, no, we haven't looked yet at uh, uh, differences across member states in, in, in the impact of, of these financial flows. Finally, to Patrick, uh, are the shocks that we saw in the data intrinsic to monetary union or are the, are the, were they simply a corollary of financial globalization and now that financial globalization is moving in reverse, uh, there's less reason to worry. Um, the differences across uh, uh, economies that we see are consistent in our, our, our minds with the idea that it's monetary union, the perceived reduction the perceived elimination of exchange risk within 
the euro area prior to 2008 that um, uh, drove these financial flows and, and, and um, correlations. Uh, you, you don't see the operation of financial factors to the same degree all across the euro area, but you, you seem to see them dramatically in economies that came into the euro in 1999 with uh, high interest rates, high spreads relative to the core. Great. Thank you, Barry. So let's turn to the second paper in, in, the, in the session. So, Paul.